There haven't been many bright spots at all for Eagles fans in 2020, but arguably the brightest has been the development and rise of Jordan Mailata. The 23-year-old former 7th round pick made his mark, not only holding his own, but proving that he had long-term starter potential against some pretty tenacious pass rushes. He looked great against Pittsburgh and again against Baltimore, but when Jason Peters returned from injury, the Eagles announced that it would be the 38-year-old who would resume play at the left tackle spot, demoting Jordan and my larder to the bench and needless to say fans were absolutely furious and after a month of less than stellar pay and the veteran being beaten over and over again Jordan Mylata returned to the left tackle spot. Firstly replacing a bench Jason Peters with three minutes to go against the Browns and returning as a starter this past week against Seattle and the question I really want to answer is what were the Eagles thinking when benching Jordan Mylata? because in my opinion this was his most complete game yet and I'm gonna tell you why. Ladies and gentlemen this is another episode of Eagles Film Room. Before we get started guys, if you want to see more of this content, make sure you're leaving a like and hitting that subscribe button, joining our community. It's something we really want to build out and we can do so many cool things. As a way of saying thank you for being the best community on the damn planet. We love you guys. And if you want to interact with fellow Eagles fans and members of this community, the Flick Sport Eagles group chat is the place to go. There's a link in the description below. Absolutely free. There are giveaways, merch competitions, daily discussions, fantasy contests and so much more. There's nearly 600 of you in there right now. So let's see if we can get past that by this time next week. I want to start off by talking about Jordan Mylata's run blocking, mainly because I feel it's the one area in his game that has the most room for development. The problem is the Eagles are barely running the ball, so we're not exactly getting a lot of opportunity to see that in motion. But we did get a few glimpses, and there was a nice play here. The Eagles in a good position to score. Jordan Mylata, all he's got to do is take on Benson Mayer and eight-year veteran and try and create an opening for Miles Sanders. Now, what we're going to see is just that sheer power. He gets a nice little chip there from Dallas Goddard, but the forklift, the hand to get reset into the chest, and he's just going to drive. And look at the lower body traction right now, just acting as an engine and drive is supposed to be an unbalanced like we used to see very early in his career. What we're seeing now is someone that has that balance can just keep driving and driving and driving and there's the hole. Jamal Adams comes in, makes a very ferocious hit. But it's just a technique of my lads and knowing how to deploy that power now and how to drive upwards and send that power through his upper body. It's getting impressive. Another area of Mylata's game that directly links to this is finding work at the second level. He often seems to get into open space and not really find his assignment, which can lead to problems. But he does a really nice job here on this design screen for Jalen Rager. What he's going to do is explode out of his stance and go straight for the legs of Hugo Armadi. Of course, second year safety, someone I really would have loved the Eagles to pick up. But alas, this is a really nice effort here from Jordan Mylata. He's going to end up getting a nice little chip, flying to the outside, and at that point, if he doesn't make that block that's a dead play. Now, ultimately, Jalen Rager is able to make things happen in space. Believe it or not, Doug Peterson, you should be doing more of that. But it's a nice bit of hustle here from Jordan Mylata. And you see it a lot better from this angle where he's just able to explode out, find the defender, and really push him to the ground. There's just a bit more decision making from him. There's a bit more assertion when it comes to making that judgment. The Seahawks, unlike the Eagles, are not silly. They realized a mile away that the Eagles have had a train wreck for an offensive line all season long and decided to throw as many stunts and twists at them as absolutely humanly possible. But what we saw from Jordan Mylata was a really mature, really composed game. He's going to be lined up here against number 90. That's defensive tackle. Bear in mind, Jerron Reed. He's 306 pounds. Now, what I want you to watch for is not just the way Mylata reacts to this, but the force in which he's thrown to the other side. Now, Jason Kelsey does a great job picking it up, but if we just go back here and just look at slow motion, Mylata nice and composed there in his kickback. He's very low, very tight, nice center of gravity. There he sees the movement from Reed and just watch the push that he's going to get here. And it's a long way round. And at that point, it just gives Kelsey enough time to disengage, see it coming. Kelsey, one of the most intelligent centers in the NFL. But that shove, Sayamala didn't even touch him. Chemistry is very important for any offensive line. And the Eagles have just lacked that all season long. Now, I don't know who's at fault here, whether it's Sayamala or Mylata. But what we're going to see is Mayo will see an acre of space in that A gap, just shift himself inside and no one pick him up. So if we go back to it, Sayamala is going to handle Rashid 
in green. It's like he's almost tried to hand it off to my Lata, who's positioning maybe a little bit too tight. Then my Lata at this point realizes, ah, minor quibble, that's gone wrong. Tries to shove himself almost back into the play, ends up giving up a sack. It's messy from both players. I don't know who's really at fault there. But either way, it's a messy play and it shows that there is clearly still some work to be done here. Now, this might be the last negative play I saw my Lata give up. One where it was an individual one and not a full offensive line blow up. So, if we take a look at this, we're just going to see number 49 loop over the top, try and cause some confusion. samalo has got to pick it up. Now, he does that. He disengages quickly. My Lata... I don't know whether he got confused. His eyes are still on number 49 all throughout. Then sees him kind of fly over the top. So his instinct is to kind of follow his man, I guess. And that just means that as the mass moves, it's easier to throw away. It's exactly what we see. Number 97 is then going to get home for a near sack. Wentz does well to get the ball away. But it's not pretty. I think, again, it's just one of those things where my Lata will learn that in time. You can see his left hand there still struggling to keep him on. And at that point, it is a losing battle. But the mentality is right. It's just that communication thing. Seattle really tried to overload that left side. Lata did get a little nervy on this play. And it's kind of understandable to see why. Seattle are going to rush four. My Lata's going to kick back and immediately steps inside to try and stop 97 crashing outside of Sayamalo. What he does, though, is allow Reed a lot of leverage around the outside he can't quite close in time does just enough to push him out the way but I mean unluckily for Carson Wentz here Jason Peters does a bit of an I don't know what Jason Peters is doing there to be honest boys I'm gonna be honest with you no idea anyway Wentz gets away from it my Lata recovers well that's the difference between the two where Jason Peters gets absolutely turned around my Lata I know it's a bit of a different situation but you look at the recognition and the body position they are kind of similar my Lata has more distance to cover his body's already turned he's already making progress and then shoves him out of the way but let's get on to the real positives. And the first one here is just absolutely the confidence he's playing with right now. This first play, he's going to face a speed rush and not really make too much contact. But now he can use that leverage to keep him at bay. That ring is suddenly a lot wider when you've got a wing band the size of a jumbo jet. So my Lata doesn't need to run out and meet his man and risk being beaten inside. He can stay nice and tight and just make sure he sweeps that arm around and stop number 98. Talking of number 98, that man is Alton Robinson, a fifth round draft pick who, unlike the Eagles fifth round draft pick last year, uh, Sharif Miller, has actually played snaps this season. And not only that, he's been pretty damn good as well. Now, he's a force to be reckoned with and he's going to try and make the easy mistake of approaching Jordan Mylanta with a speed rush. It's something he can counter so well and so quickly. Mylanta just able to stonewall him. Just look at that. Hands up, throws him to the floor like he is a human deck chair, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very easy for Mylanta there. You can see the swipe and the swipe he has to make because my Lata is so rangy that he anticipates that hand is going to be so much closer. Nowhere near. My Lata then is able to get a hand on the outside shoulder. Almost wrap around him. Reset his hands. Get under the shoulder pads into his stomach. And bang, there comes the power. Upend him. To the ground he goes. I love that. Absolutely love that. Nothing overwhelmingly good about this play, but it's just fun to watch. It's going to be a nice little double team here. Isaac Sayamalo is going to pick up number 91. Mylata realizes that KJ Wright is going to drop back into coverage, which means he can do this. Bang! Like, get off! Like, I'm sorry, look at that. Look at the way he gets upended. His leg is in the air like he's about to switch in music somewhere. Mylata flies in. Bang! Like, see you later. And I just love that. Again, nice little completion there. Carson Wentz actually got a pass on target. But it was good to see. His hand usage has really improved as well. He's going to face a nice cross-chop combo here. And just look at the way he's able to displace them. He's got those puppy balls I always speak about. I don't know why I call them puppy balls. But it's keeping it light. You don't want to get too handsy, too full-on, too grippy. When you've got a defensive end that is just trying to throw all sorts of movers and shakers at you. The sooner you can swap them down like a reflex boxer just trying to displace those jabs the better because the more he's doing that the less he's getting home to the quarterback and that's what we're seeing from my Lata. but look at the posture here though it's top over bottom which means he's pushing forward he's still driving he's got a firm center of gravity he's not back he's not upended he's not unbalanced he's using that weight and that power now which means even if those hands are on target even if he does get around the arms you've still got to get past the body of 300 pounds that's driving into you and that is just not gonna happen very nice work here from my Lata to just swat inside arms down with the outside arm Old Tom Robinson is going to try something very similar here and have again limited success. Mylata sees it coming. He's going to open his chest out 
And look at that. The second that inside arm comes down, Mylata underneath into the chest of Robinson. Now, the difficulty is, as he's pushed him outside, Robinson's gone for the same thing. He wants to break across the body of Mylata. Minor quibble, though. Mylata's so big that just watch that right leg now. Bring the weight around and just roll it through his hips. And it's a little bit much. And he does end up nearly on the ground. But it is enough for Wentz to get that ball away cleanly. Again, all you could ask for from Mylata. Cleanly moving that weight around his body. Something he used to struggle with. And my final point is something that I picked up on in last episode as well, in that Jordan Mylata is always the first man to try and pick up the man that's down. And you know what? This isn't a physical attribute of his play. It's not something that's coachable. It's not something you can learn from a technical standpoint. But while every other member of that offensive line is hanging their head down low, they're shrugging, they look disinterested, it's Jordan Mylata that is straight over to Carson Wentz, that is straight over to Jalen Rager, that is straight over to Miles Sanders, lifting linemen off of them, throwing Seahawks players away like they're lifting a child from a burning building and getting them back to their feet. And that's hustle, that's passion, that's love for your teammate, that's going to war for your brother and making sure he's good. And none of the members of the offensive line are doing it. My Lata is the only one. And it may not count for much, but it shows that he's playing it for the right reasons. He is making the most of every single opportunity. The Eagles were absolute idiots to bench him for Jason Peters. I hope they live to regret that decision and won't make the same mistake again. Boys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. From myself, Liam Jenkins, I'll see you next time for another episode of Eagles Film Room.